Hi, this is the supplemental video for bass for the Banana Boat song number 117 from the Essential Elements book. If you haven't watched it already, I highly recommend that you go to the main video lesson for this where I'm playing the violin because I go over the whole lesson in that one and this I'm only going to talk about things that are specific to the bass so you're going to miss out on a lot if you don't go and watch that main video. The link to it is in the description below the video. All right, so a couple of things about the bass and the Banana Boat song. First, is I want you to realize that this is a D major scale song, so you have to make sure that you play your D scale and arpeggio before you start to practice this song. So let's just go ahead and play that together. I'm gonna to put a metronome on at 80 beats per minute because that's the speed the Banana Boat song goes if you're using smart music. So here we go, play the D scale with me. One, two, three, Make sure you include your arpeggio. You'll notice that my preferred arpeggio fingering comes into the first finger on F sharp position. We call that second and a half position. Goes to fourth finger A and across to the high D. I find that this shift is a little bit easier to do than this shift over here, but you could do it either way. All right, so a few things about the Banana Boat song that are specific to the bass. The first thing, is that I want you to notice that it starts off with a D major scale. You have to notice where scales and arpeggios happen in your music because if you can start recognizing those scale and arpeggio patterns, it makes it a lot easier to play music and to learn music and it just, everything works better. So pay attention for where things like that happen. As you come down this scale, this is where people will get messed up. When they go to C sharp, they let these fingers come way out and then they have a hard time shifting back to a B because what happens is the thumb comes around the back of the bass, come back here and when you put your fingers back down, they're not coming straight across the instrument. Instead, they're coming at an angle and you can't get enough space between an A and a B. Your B ends up flat your A ends up sharp or some combination of those two. So you wanna be careful that as you're coming down the D scale, I keep my hand position. These two fingers lift up just a tiny bit when I go from D to C sharp. And now when I go to shift back to the B, my thumb and my hand move together in one shape. And I come back to that B with my fingers curved on the fingertips perpendicular to the string. So watch as I do that. When I go to play the A, I just relax these fingers. They stay right over the string. I'm not thinking about lifting my fingers. I'm thinking more about relaxing my fingers. And then they just stay right over the string. And whether you're sitting or standing to play the bass, the same concept is true. All right. Next thing in the next measure. When I go to play the open D before the F sharp, I don't lift my fingers like this. My open D looks like this, with my four fingers for the F sharp hovered, ready to play over the D string. So be careful about that. And also notice that this measure, D to F sharp, it's a section of D major arpeggio. Again, you wanna make sure you recognize those arpeggio patterns when they show up in your music. We're gonna move on. The fifth measure, This measure, if you notice, and I hope you noticed, is completely a D arpeggio. D, F sharp, A, back to F sharp. And this is something that gives bass players a lot of trouble. When I go to that A, I want to be really careful about what my fourth finger does. I'm coming right back to it, and I see kids do this all the time. Instead of keeping their fourth finger in position, they lift it way up, and then they don't get back to it correctly. If I'm doing that right, I can have my F sharp and my A both pressed down at the same time, and I can play those two notes together. So when I play it, 
keep my F sharp finger in place. It's right there. It's ready to come back to an F sharp and I don't end up missing it after doing this kind of thing. So just be careful about that. And then for the B, notice how my fingers are ready in position to go to that B. Keeping that hand position solid is really, really important and maybe the most important thing you can do for being able to play this song accurately. One more thing, and that's the challenge round. Hopefully by now you've noticed a link to Harry Belafonte's version of this in the link below this video and below the main lesson. Challenge round is that you've noticed, I'm sure, that Harry Belafonte's version is not much like the version we have in the book. So I want to challenge you to listen to that version and come up with a version of this song that sounds a little bit more like a song from the Caribbean. Your version shouldn't sound like my version. My version doesn't quite sound like Harry Belafonte's and neither should yours. You're going to try to, try to come up with something that's your interpretation of this song. And this is how I play it on the bass. Again, yours shouldn't sound like mine. I am going to point out one thing, though. Instead of trying to shift back here for that A that I throw in there, I go across like I do in that arpeggio fingering from the beginning. A, B, and then down the scale. F sharp ready to cross over. All right? So I hope this was helpful to you. If this video helped you, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and remember, Keep practicing.